There's a good picture of Ray Rhymes, the veteran, Sepulpa Chieftain head basketball coach. I don't know how many years, 20, 25 years he's been there. Close to 25 years. And I'll tell you what, when you beat Ray Rhymes, I've coached many a game against him, Don. When you beat him, you get up early. And you better bring your lunch with you <laughs> right off the bus because he's waiting for you, isn't he? Gordon has both free tosses. The Hornets with 59 points midway through the fourth quarter. Dick blocked by Stokes. He's had another tremendous game off the bench. Stokes with nine points. Around five blocks and six rebounds. And now you see the Hornets starting to delay a little bit. Ah, going into a little four corner spread it out. Doesn't work for him four on two break nice pass Williams double dip and he's got it. He's got five points here in the second half. 59 47 again they've cut it back to a dozen with three and a half minutes to go in the game. Great body control then by Emil Williams and there was a couple of Hornets came right at him. He was able to maintain possession and get it down. McCorder says the heck with this delay. Let's get some points on the board. <laughs> He's got 14 in this contest. Nice pass from Buford in to Dick count it and he'll go to the line. After he gets fouled by McCorders and that's his fourth personal. And again the Chargers are still in the ballgame. You look at the score and you say 61 49 why it's over but not with a three point shot. He gets this one down they're only 11. Dick a 58 percent free throw shooter one of two in this game and looking for his 10th point three year starter at Memorial. And I'm sure coach Nate Harris of the Washington Hornets is certainly aware of of comebacks that the Chargers are capable of doing. I put a little pressure on them. Last time these two teams met a couple of weeks ago at Washington it was the Chargers holding off Washington 76 73 foul here I believe on bias the sophomore number 32. And just spreading it out McWhorter's taking it to the hole drawing the foul and when you get in this situation you have to hit those free throws 301 left now that possession only uh, what it was 11 seconds so only 10 seconds passed and if he were to miss it Memorial get it that would be a well spent foul McCorders does miss it Harris committed his third foul he's got the ball they're down by 11 for three Louis count it. Brandon Lloyd's first tray of the game. He's got eight points. He's been rather quiet in this game. It's an eight-point game with 2.45 to go. And the Charger fans are on their feet. They're doing some stomping with two and a half minutes to go. McQuarters takes it to the glass. Stokes tried to slam it home. Nothing doing. Lloyd for another. Buford with a nice save, but he hit the end line. You can see how quickly a game can turn. Had Lloyd got that one down, now you're only five back, and less than a minute uh, had passed it, so you were 11 down. So when you spread it out like Washington is spreading it out, and then you take it to the hole, you got to score, you got to get your free throws down. He takes, uh, Nate Harris takes Stokes out of the game, gives himself five pretty good ball handlers. McQuarters against Harris. Dish to Williams. Foul. He'll go to the line. I'm surprised uh, we haven't had a technical foul yeah. for hanging on the rim because sometimes it looks like it's a, just a little excessive hanging. Of course, that's up to the player's opinion. You'll see Landis Williams come in here, take it up. He gets fouled, no doubt about the foul there, and then hanging on the rim. You know, they allow you to do that if it looks like you may be coming down on someone, but I don't believe there's anyone under him now. Williams had hit six free throws in a row, seven from seven of nine from the line. He's got 19 points. This free throw will match his season average. Listen to this, Don. 46 rebounds by the Hornets, 20 by Landis Williams. Bias pulls it down. It's an eight-point game. Two minutes to go. 
and a foul called on Wilson. That's his fourth personal. And puts the Chargers at the one and one with T.J. Buford, one of their better free throw shooters at the line and stops the clock with a minute 56 remaining. And you always hate to see your team commit a foul and stop the clock when you're on defense and have a lead. You like to get a few more ticks to go off, maybe sink back in there a little bit, make it hit it from the outside. But when you play aggressive, it's awful hard to turn it off as well, so it goes both ways. Buford. It's got to go to the wire, Dodd. He's got 16 points to match his season average, four of six from the line. Six foot senior hits them both and closes it to a six point game with 155 to go. They get the steal and Williams goes to the line. Unbelievable. And, and suddenly when that momentum turns it really can be awful hard to swing it back in your favor. A very alert defense in there by the Chargers and they almost got away with it. The foul really was a good foul by the yeah. by the Hornets because it was a cinch basket. Now they've got to go hit him from the line. Leon Wilson commits his fifth personal foul. He takes a seat. McQuarters, who I think was responsible more or less for the turnover, gets to sit down as well. Right now he's got Mikhail Lovett at one guard. And again. Brandon Barklow at the other. And Wilson's not about to sit down. Although he's committed five fouls. Marshall Gordon at one forward, Williams at the other. And we'll see who replaces him. Stokes will come in for the fouled out Leon Wilson. And at the line is, I believe, Brandon Lloyd or no, Emil Williams. And again, the Chargers, Don, having an opportunity to score points without the clock running. And when you're ahead, you don't want to let the team you're playing do that. Williams, one of two in the game. Six points. What a big free throw that is. The Chargers have scored, JV. The game's last nine points. And at one time down by 14, the three point play a moment ago, then the three point basket, a couple of free throws, and now a couple or one more as he misses that one. It's 61 56, five point game, minute 45 to go. That ball is kicked in the backcourt. <laughs> and that's great pressure that the Chargers are putting on, not getting much help out of the the, uh, the front line men that time they weren't coming back and helping the guards. The Chargers who brought a couple of buses of fans with them and they brought the team are on their feet wanting some defense and they got it. Marshall Gordon getting trapped on the far side of the court. He, he really did what was right. He tried to throw the ball high and get it away from him where his team would have an opportunity to react to it. Stokes did react, but he just couldn't get there. You see the fans at the bottom of your screen. They're on their feet for the last minute and a half. Chargers down by five. They were down by 14. Lloyd. Stokes or whether Williams loses it. Buford. Williams. Uh oh. Harris couldn't handle the pass. The and Chargers, Mike, excuse me. Mike ahead. Rock's trying to really get his guys in there and get a full court pressure going again, but the Hornets want a timeout. A minute 12 remaining in the game. The winner goes to the state tournament next Thursday night, opening round at the Maybe Center. The loser has to come back and win its next game to get to the state tournament as well. As we look at the area championship game crowd on TCI. The Chargers at one time led by as many as 15 points in this ball game and led by 13 when a timeout was called with 447 remaining. 
We have, we have a lot of basketball left on in the last minute and 12 mm -hmm. seconds. We're going to see some intentional fouling, and free throws are still going to be very crucial. The Hornets led 61 to 47 with three and a half minutes to go, but a three point play by the Chargers, the old fashioned way, cut it to 11, and then with 2.45 to go, they got a three point basket by Brandon Lloyd to cut it to eight. A couple of free throws to cut it to six. Another free throw to cut it to five and a backcourt foul called on the Chargers with a minute 10 remaining and we'll go to the line again for Washington. And again, Emil Williams just really coming up and fouling Odell Stokes as soon as he catches a ball. Evidently, Michael Rourke feels maybe that would be the guy to put to the line. Uh, Odell Stokes, he's a 50% shooter from the foul line and Trying to put the pressure on the big fella. One of three in this game. He's in double figures with 10 points, and what a big free throw that was. And he accepted the challenge, and immediately Nate Harris pulls the Hornets out. He wants four back on defense. Don't want any fouling in the front court. He hits them both. Two crucial free throws by Stokes to give him 11 points. He wants another plaque for player of the game. And Don, those were two big, big free throws. Lloyd, been dogged all night. Three-pointer. Yes! Buford has 20 points. He cuts it to nine, or to a four-point game. Timeout called with 59 seconds remaining. And we're looking at two possessions, and you're going to get it in 59 seconds. You're going to get it more than twice. Oh, there's a great shot in there. Under a little pressure as well by T.J. Buford. Buford, with his three, three-pointers in this game, has 20 points. Washington trying to get to the state tournament for the 19th time and then try and win their eighth state championship, their fifth in the last 10 seasons, although they haven't won one since 1987. They've been to the state finals nine times and have won seven state championships in those nine attempts. The Chargers are trying to win their second state championship having won their only basketball championship in 1974. Their last state tournament appearance was 1989 and Stokes is fouled again by Williams again. And they're doing it without starting the clock so to speak maybe one second gone off the clock on the foul and putting the big man on the line and can he do it twice in a row Don. Three of five from the line he's got 11 points to go along with his half dozen blocks and seven rebounds. Haywood Hill tells the memorial cheerleaders to move back a little bit. Stokes has been quite a factor in this game. In the two previous games, he had only five and four points in the two Hornet losses. And in this game, he's got a dozen and has hit the game's last three free throws. Now four for the Hornets to give him a six point lead. Four in a row under great pressure. Williams for three. Dick with the offside rebound, and he gets fouled to stop the clock with 49 seconds left. And Nate Harris almost leaped out of his <laughs> shoes. Nate Harris really thought uh, Brandon Barclow then was in there on a jump ball, had the ball with both hands, probably had a little arm in there maybe. So Landon Dick gets his chance at the line. He's two of three from the stripe and has ten points. One of two players in double figures for the Chargers. Williams with a big rebound and the foul called on Williams with 47 seconds remaining. Well let's see if uh, the other big inside player for the Hornets can get his free throws down Stokes hit his four in a row. Williams has been rather quiet hasn't he in this fourth quarter he hasn't uh, done much in this fourth quarter. I don't think he scored a point in the fourth quarter. He has 19 in the ballgame. He gets robbed from the line. Here come the Chargers. Down by six. 
And a blocking foul called on Buford. That'll be his fourth. Stops the clock with 39 seconds remaining. And the Chargers almost have to foul just as soon as the Hornets gain possession of the ball, Don, in order to have a chance because they're still only uh, six points down. That's two possessions. They missed the free throw, hit a, hit a three, get a timeout. This three-point play has changed the closing minute of a basketball mm -hmm. game so dramatically. 39 seconds left, still plenty of time. Oh, yes. McWhorter is at the line, 51% free throw shooter. It went in. And you see Nate Harris across the way over there. He certainly realizes 39 seconds is a long way, but this last free throw in here by McWhorter's helps a little bit. That puts it to three possessions. McWhorter's with 16 points. And a foul in the backcourt by McWhorter's. I don't think Nate wanted that with 36 seconds remaining. No, that's happened about three times, Don, here in the last three minutes of play where a Washington Hornet has fouled and stopped the clock, and you're putting the Chargers on the line to score without any ticks running off. So you don't want to do that, not unless you're just in there where you're having to make the foul to prevent a basket. The quarters will foul out of this ball game with 16 points. Great night for the 6'1 sophomore guard. Buford collects his 21st point to lead all scores. And puts the Chargers at the 60 point mark. This free throw will cut the margin down to six. Now their two possessions are back again, talking about the Chargers. That might be on Buford. If it is, it'll be his fifth foul. He'll be the first player for Memorial and the third player in the game to foul out of this contest. And Buford will leave for the final 31 seconds of regulation with 22 points. Six out of eight from the line. Nice night for the six foot senior guard. Big free throw by Mikhail Lovett. Averages just two and a half points per game, but hits that one. And with 31 seconds left, tries to expand the margin back to where it was at eight. Can't do it. 68-61. Chargers could use a three-pointer. Blocking foul on the sideline. That stops the clock with 28 seconds left. Barclow's second personal foul. That'll send to the Chargers to the line. Rich Harris, six foot senior, averaging 10 points per game the last two years, has eight in this game. At 18 points, though, the lead the Chargers in the regional championship win over Owasso. Twenty eight seconds still if he hits this one Don two possessions could give you the lead. Yeah, it's a five point game sixty eight sixty three and the foul in the backcourt on Yasser his fourth personal foul. Do you think they're fouling too quickly JV or should they No. Or are they doing the right thing. No I think they're doing exactly what you have to do just as soon as that ball comes in you got to go get the foul. You'd like for your kids to be able to foul though without just doing the intentional foul maybe dig at the ball maybe make a steal and get away with the foul. But they're going right to him and fouling and that's the only way they can do it. They have to get that clock stopped. Nate Harris I think called the timeout. He wants to check something over with Haywood Hill. I don't know what it could be unless it would be the time on the clock. Uh, I didn't catch what it was on the throw in but uh, the foul came very quickly and that's what they're talking about. 
26 seconds. I was thinking, Don, there was 28 on the free throw, so two ticks would have gone off, and that would have been about right, but I could be wrong on it. Yeah, there were 28 seconds when the free throw free throws were made by Harris. Memorial being led by T.J. Buford, who just fouled out with 22 points. Landon Dick follows with 10, and then nine each, or rather nine for Harris, eight for Brandon Lloyd. For the Hornets, Romeo Williams with 19, Odell Stokes 13, Robert McCorders is fouled out with 16. At the line is Brandon Barclow. He had a big first half, nine points. In fact, had seven in the first quarter. Nine at halftime, and now gets his 10th point of the game. And the first two games, uh, Coach Harris said, was very difficult on them because they couldn't hit the free throws, but they've hit the big ones at the close of this one. He certainly has. Barclow gets them both. He's got 11 points, 70 to 63. Landon Dick for three. Yes. 70, 66. We're not done yet. Four point game with 12 seconds to go. And Barclow fouled at half court. I thought then they may have fouled just a little sooner or called a timeout. Well, should the Ninth ranked Trojans of Jinx win their upcoming game with more than it looks like it'll be Jinx against Memorial for a state tournament berth and uh, tell you what JB that ought to be an inter entertaining ball game. That would be an entertaining ball game Don and you know it's so difficult to come back on a s Saturday night and play after losing on Friday night. Now if you win on Friday night in other words the winner of the Jinx Moore game playing the loser of this game they've got a little momentum coming in coming from a win so it's a tough way to get the state tournament. Owasso is still in the hunt as well. Owasso in the losers bracket game. They have to play Stillwater and then try and beat the loser of the Bartlesville Union game. So the Rams certainly have a tough road to hoe. Better have a chance to get to the state tournament. We'll be there on TCI this weekend or this coming week from the Maybe Center. Rich Harris to close out the scoring. A four point game, 72 to 68. In favor of the Washington Hornets. Who led all the way from late in the first period. However, they led by as many as 15 in this fourth quarter. And watch it evaporate in the last couple of minutes of the game. 72 68, your final. The Hornets are going to the state tournament for the 19th time in school history, and we're coming back with our players of the game in just a moment. This high school sports game of the week is brought to you by Arby's, by Brown Auto World, by Children's Medical Center, by Eastern Oklahoma Orthopedic Center, by the Williams Company, and by your Fred Jones dealer. Look to South Park Lincoln Mercury for the best in small car value. The new 93 Mercury Tracer, the complete small car with over 68 standard features, is only $10,499, a price no foreign car with less equipment can match. And the sporty Mercury Capri Convertible with front-wheel drive, factory air, AM FM cassette sound system, and more starts at only $11,995. That's thousands less than Miata. For the best in small car value, look to South Park Lincoln Mercury at 98th and Memorial, a member of the Fred Jones Automotive Group. I love these French films. They're so romantic, so passionate. Here comes the juicy part. Oh, Arby's French dip sub with a cup of hot au jus. Mm, oh, look at all that lean oven roasted roast beef. Arby's French dip sub, it's so juicy, it's so delicious. It makes me very emotional. And look, it's only $1.99, what a price. La différence est bonne, n'est-ce pas? That is my favorite line. Different is good. <laughs> I can stop whenever I want. I only do it on weekends. It's my life. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm OK. I can drive. Really? It'll never happen to me.
It seems that in the automobile business, everyone is an expert and every dealership has a better deal. Do me a favor. Think about your last sales or service experience. If it wasn't good, please come to Crown. We're not perfect, but I'll guarantee that we'll do everything to make your buying or service experience a great one. For a Buick, Jeep, Eagle, BMW, or quality used vehicle, come to Crown. We won't be undersold, and you won't be underwhelmed, and that's a promise. Crown Auto World, 4444 South Sheridan, and Sam's is still next door. Well, we hope you enjoyed it uh, as the Washington Hornets improved their record to 21 and 4, ranked number 3 in the state. They'll take that ranking into the state tournament. Under Nate Harris, a 72-68 winner over the Chargers, beating the Chargers for the first time in three tries this season. The Chargers ranked fifth in the state, dropped to 19 and 6, but uh, now have one more game remaining. They have to win either uh, they have to win against the Jinx Moore winner in order for the Chargers under Michael Rourke to get to the state tournament, which starts Thursday again at the Maybe Center for Class 5A. Here are the look of the final statistics. And you take a look at the shooting. Both teams uh, not real hot dawn from the field. Washington, though, shot a respectable 44 percent. But from the free throw line, 23 of 33 for 70 percent for the Hornets. And that's good shooting. And there's equal good shooting on a free throw by a Memorial 21 to 29. But rebounds, 50 rebounds. Sometimes wow. uh, teams don't get 50 rebounds in two games. Hornets did tonight. Turnover ratio there kind of balanced it out again. 24 for the Hornets and only 15 for the Chargers. For the Hornets, leading scorer Romeo Williams with 19 points. Robert McCorders followed with 16. And Odell Stokes with 13. For the Chargers, T.J. Buford led with 22. And uh, Landon Dick, 13. Rich Harris with 11. The only other Charger in double figures as we take a look at our All-American Trophy players of the game. And we look at the Washington Hornets, number 32. The little guard there, Robert McQuarters, averaging under 10 points a game, but not tonight. 16 points, had eight rebounds, had a great game on the floor. And this is not to overshadow Landis Williams with down 22 rebounds, but Robert McQuarters gets our player of the game. He's a six foot sophomore guard, and for the Chargers, we're going to go with another six foot guard, a senior, TJ Buford, who led all scorers in this game with 22 points, had three three point baskets, four rebounds, six of eight from the free throw line. So, congratulations to those two players. They'll receive plaques for their own possession, and then the schools will receive larger plaques for their possession and all plaques courtesy of All American Trophies. You see our final score with the third ranked Booker T. Washington Hornets going to the state tournament for the 19th time and get set to try and win their eighth state championship in basketball. We hope you'll join us next week as we will be back for the state tournament from the Maybe Center on TCI Cable Vision of Tulsa.